good morning we are uh, spraying thrips in cotton Glenn and Donald as you've seen in cornbread the other day are putting out liquid fertilizer on the rest of the cotton and me and my dad looked all yesterday morning and tried to uh, tried to find a good enough uh, just done a stand because the stand was perfect but uh, good enough reason I guess to keep the cotton that we're uh, having to plow up and been plant soybeans on on the 24th, 23rd, 24th of June. Uh, not ideal plant dates, but here we go. Only option at this point. I'll show you guys the cotton when we get there. <laughs> right out there where that big truck's going but uh yeah it, it was probably six seven foot deep where i'm driving this tractor right now and that was two weeks ago maybe and it really just got dry enough yesterday to just go all part of it. We're lucky to only have 35, 40 acres of uh, cotton that we have to replant. Yeah, it's hard to, like one of my buddies said, it's hard to pick up and start over on the, right at the end of June. It's lucky if the beans are up and going unless it comes a little shower by the 1st of July, which is super late, but I'm going to go down here show you that and it wasn't the stand that i've said before it wasn't the stand of cotton because all that came up perfect um you can tell it was that we planted it on may the 20th 21st 20 sometime in there and on june the first after it was up and going a few days later an inch tall it literally stayed underwater from probably June 4th or 5th when it started raining until June the 12th. It, 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 I say it stayed underwater. It became, it got flooded. It's flooded from the river, which is right in front of us. Runs under the highway there, down into Enid Lake. It's got the river. Anyway, um, yeah, it 
backs up anytime it rains like six inches four to six inches it's going to get out for a little bit like i said we got 16 in like four days 16 inches here it probably rained as much here as it did anywhere um i jump out It just this cotton looks like it's a week old or less and there's a whole bunch of it just like that right there it's just dying see that root not what not the color you want a cotton plant root to be uh, just black that one's gonna die you see the little ugly leaf I mean, there'll be some, there will be some cotton make it. That one's gonna die. Uh, the roots need to be white. Let's see if I can find maybe a healthy root. It's one of the healthier plants here. It's got some white on it. It goes black to white, but it's got a black tip on it and there's no feeder roots branching out. Um, I don't see any really healthy plants right here where I'm at. It's one of the worst spots. They were trying to do a stand count, claimed that there was not enough skips in the cotton to get an insurance, to do an insurance claim. Here's a healthy plant. Black, black as can be. Yeah, it's, you gotta plow it up. It's not what you wanna see, but it's part of it. Uh, we could have spent another 50 to, well, 50 acres in a day, side dressing it, spraying it. We didn't spray it. We sprayed all the other on this farm. There's another 350 acres. Cotton's a month old or more. It's over a month old and it looks like it's a week old with dead roots and ugly leaves. But like I said, we're lucky with the rain that we had and the acres that we had flooded and underwater that that's all we got to, got to replant. So here we go. Here's a really good uh, look at a plant that's still in the roots, I mean in the dirt, where the roots are still in the dirt. You can see those little white feeder roots without having to. There's a seed actually that sprouted. It's kind of neat. I think so. Uh, I tore the seed off of it there. May have been a seed that did not sprout. Let's see. Try. Try to hold the camera and carefully remove the dirt from the roots at the same time. And yeah, there's the little white roots that you need. Like I said, this cotton probably would not have died. Probably not, maybe. A lot of it was dying, just day by day. But see the little black tip on the tap root, main root? Not good. Not good at all. Um, severely water stressed, drowned out a lot. Um, it's the one we dug up or pulled off of that. There's another one, just ugly roots, ugly leaves. Uh, still green, not the green you want, but. Anyway, he's about got me a place to start, and I'm going to get on the uh, do-all tractor, smooth it out, and my dad's supposed to be here with the planter in just a second, and we're going to put some soybeans in the ground on June the 23rd, and plus today is. Yeah, that's about
get me to go back and uh, get my planters. Got them hooked up to my truck back at the gym. You know, let JR get ahead of me a little bit. He should have plenty of time by the time I get back. We're gonna do the rest of this field right here and then a section right across that levee. It stayed, uh, stayed underwater. I think it's where those sprayer tracks go is where we're going. Everything to the left of those sprayer tracks we're gonna take out. Big sand blow where the river blew out right there. Keeping all this cotton in front of us. Uh, obviously this lower end doesn't look too hot, but Yep, we're going to get the bean planter. Hey. Oh, pretty good. This is my mom. Hey, folks. First time on the YouTube channel, I think it. Huh? Probably. Escort. Uber driver. You know, this will be the best Uber driver you've ever had. Maybe. Alright, thanks for the ride, Mom. See you. She's a good lady. Most of the time. is the blowout of the creek. That caused most of this damage. The river broke its levee right there, levee or berm or whatever you want to call it, and busted out, flooded this whole field. Uh, right behind me is a really wet spot. I was trying to just cover some sprayer ruts it was made we're gonna save all that cotton from here back to that road that runs along there um, you can see what he just got around this sand blow and uh, yeah, that those were the old cotton rows you can see what's left from where the creek blew out and then I guess it drained back out slowly here and through the other drains but almost finished up with this place there's uh one more we're gonna do and right down the road so here we go well we got one positive for the day got our duck corn coming up sprouted They are. If JR didn't cut it all up, he got a little too close someplace. I didn't get all of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that back in. That may not be much more of that. Come up. Well, we made it to the new field. Me and JR had to stop and get a big log out there. Mm -hmm. We Sprouting and it 
looked pretty good for some soil days to go on too. So that's seven or eight acres that more than we'll get to mix in. It's just a couple miles away from this right here. So we're uh, steady rolling, and uh, these are Jacob's planters. They're uh, it's 15 rows on a 25 foot toolbar. We planted some later beans with them at the same time that we were planting. He was done. He was done early. Uh, same time we were planting these last, last soybeans with the big planter, 1790 before it rained. Uh, they've done a, been a perfect stand. Uh, gonna wrap up the year planting with them. Get them back to him for next time. Finished planting. Give you guys a little tour of the duck blind. While we're here, if I don't get snake bit. Uh, a lot of a lot of cover. Anyway, that's it. You've been looking at it, been seeing it on the videos. Need to do a little work on the steps. Maybe a little brushing later on. Right now it be okay. Like I said, a little running bait. They need to, uh, that's the roof. Oh, yeah, mercy, there's a lot of bugs in here. A lot of vines, uh, which is good, I guess. A lot of shell boxes. trash can but uh, the shells I mean the vines had a lot of camo it's it's leaning back I don't know if you can tell in this but just this corner mainly I've talked about getting either a jack right here on this one leg or maybe just pushing the front down but standing in it right now I think this back left corner just came up it'll be okay but no, we've killed, we've killed a lot of ducks out of it with leaning like this and uh, haven't made a problem since. This is actually an old pallet rack. Uh, anybody knows what a pallet rack is. We painted it, kind of camouflaged it, uh, put, wrapped it in plywood. Uh, through the vines here. I bet there's at least five snakes in here right now. Uh, there's a tractor out there running. Got to jump back in. Uh, just gonna get you a look at this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten shooting holes. A brand new floor. gun holsters for each individual hole. 
chairs for everyone. And what we're going to do, what our plan is, is to uh, level this up some way. I guess jack the back side up for the being dry. This back corner. Probably jack it up. Like I said, it don't have to be perfect. It's a duck line. But uh, the person standing right here is just almost falling back. It's getting, the more that ditch runs back there, and a lot of times the water's so deep we'll have to run a boat uh, down that ditch. So, yeah. Here is the. Uh, one of our duck lines, Southwest Duck Club, by the way. That's the outfitter guide service. Um, oh, the addition to the blind. Patch the roof just in this one spot for sure. Maybe put a post or something, support. Might do new stairs. I don't know. They're okay. They're better than they have been. Uh, but for sure, going to add a garage to park our uh, side-by-sides. Got a new side-by-side, -side, by the way. Be seeing that one pretty soon. Um, you got to watch the future videos to see what that, what, what kind it is. But about right here, at a garage where we can pull in from the field, from the drive through the field side-by-sides, bring it in right here, park beside the blind, and probably right in here somewhere where all this has grown up uh, have a grill or a griddle or something where we can whoop up a hot breakfast have it all covered to be uh, from working ducks uh, most of the time the ducks come from that uh, down that side of the tree line so we can camouflage that we're usually good. We're always in the shadows until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We very rarely hunt after 11 o'clock. Those are killing me. Shorts are cool. But not at, uh, not at dusky dark when uh, the mosquitoes come alive. Woo. Anyway, I'm about to uh, finish planting the beans out here. I'm about to just smash uh, the ground with some uh, with my, with my tractor tires and kind of create a waterway while I'm uh, for this duck hole. It's, it's a little rough, if you can tell. A little cloudy last Sunday, I just, uh, Just disc it up like three times, planting corn on it. Cause it was supposed to rain, but it didn't rain. Here we are, look at that water line. The water was actually, if you look at the water line, it was up over the floor of that blind, which very rarely happened. That's why we built it up on the pallet rack as high as we did, like three and a half, four foot off the ground. But I'm gonna get in this drain, pack my tires through them clods, let the water have a little direction. And yes, I've got a planter back there, but I don't have it down. Still a vacuum on, but I'm uh, not planting beans right now, so. Elk hole farming is my regular farm. We just do what we do. Shoot ducks if we get close enough. Thanks for watching, guys.